<laughs> it's time to... <laughs> The biggest sunflower you have? No, it's not. I harvested a much bigger one. You weren't even around. It's you weren't around though, for whatever. it. Yeah, really? Because this trunk is bigger than anything you've ever seen in your life, <laughs> including any harvest you've ever made. This is just a fun chores day here at the homestead. It's weirdly like misting, cloudy, but yeah. a little bit hot, a little tropical. It reminds me of my time on the island, you know? <laughs> Today we're gonna do a little cleanup. So the sunflowers back here in the yard did quite well. Jacques, nothing else really in this reformed back bed. The back half did too well. Yeah. So I think what we'll do is we'll cover crop this. We gotta get these out of the ground first. They're um, big. I'll let you tackle this one. Okay. You know, I think you're gonna that have some one, fun with it. Yeah. Um, but what I wanna do is first take down the head. Um, Cause we're gonna save these heads. Oh my God. I want to see how hefty that is. I feel that. That actually came down way faster than I expected. Wow. Probably yeah. weighs more than your entire harvest this year. <laughs> That's like the angles I was playing in my head. Geometrics. Nailed it. You know. <laughs> That's what they call it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh my god, bro. Dude, give that to the chicken straight up. That literally freaked hate, me out. I hate I everything about that. That actually freaked me out. These are leaf footed bugs. They will wreck your. Oh, they fly. They can fly too. Get the chicken. Let's give these chicken ASAP. <laughs> ASAP. ASAP. <laughs> Come on, Chatty. Come on, Chatty. Today's video is sponsored by Armra Colostrum. Bit of a curveball here on the channel. I know. I never really do sponsorships, I never really take sponsorships. In this case, I asked them to sponsor the channel because of how much this has changed my overall experience of life every day. And it sounds crazy, but it is completely true. So a lot of you know on the channel, I've been working on my fitness, working on my health, working on my diet. And part of that's just because I wanna be healthier, but another part is because I was having, for a couple years, really serious gut problems to the point where it was just impacting my daily life. And so my girlfriend found this product, actually from Instagram. We found it off an Instagram ad, tried it out, and in, two days, I would say 90-ish percent of all my gut problems were just completely gone. So what is it? It is bovine colostrum. Colostrum is the first milk produced by mammals in the first like 24 to 48 hours of life to help nurse the calves in this case. Now you might be thinking, well, what about the calves? This is actually created from the surplus colostrum, not the colostrum that is used for the calves. So the calves drink first, and then this, which is considered a waste product in the dairy industry, is sort of upcycled into a bovine colostrum product for us to consume. Now, I'm certainly no scientist. I am no health expert. All I can tell you is my own daily experience and the fact that I've never talked about a supplement in my life let alone to you guys, but also to really anyone in my life. And I've told nearly everyone I know about this. And to me, the way I like to use it, usually in the morning, sometimes also once in the evening, I will just mix up a glass of cold water, maybe a little sparkling if you want to, but it mixes really well into cold water with one of those little drink mixer things. And then I just sip it and it tastes really good. I like the blood orange flavor, the watermelon flavor. So guys, I don't know what else to say. Check them out in the description. Absolutely love it. And let's get back to the video. So for cover crops, you got a lot of options and we actually have some of those. So I'm gonna run you through just a few of them here. I would probably, for me, stay away from the Sweet Lorraine Improved Fava Bean right now. I want something a little bit more mixed. I don't want just a single bean. This one's interesting, Jacques. Soil Builder Peas and Oats. Dynamic Duo, easy to grow feed pe field peas and oats. So we've used this one before, that one's quite nice. You got buckwheat, crimson clover, and then hairy vetch. I actually think buckwheat is the one, the one that I've been wanting to try the most because it flowers really quickly. Yeah. Good for pollinators, and then it's easy to kill. It's fall, we're burned out of the garden. Us. It's okay to be over it, right? It's okay. Oh, yeah. We're basically just saying, this part of the garden, don't worry about it. Yeah, don't worry about Two it. Two months, let it do its thing. The plan, guys, actually before spring, I'm gonna be redoing the design of the entire in-ground backyard garden. I haven't even told Jacques yet. He's probably gonna cry. But Jacques, remember when we did the International Garden? Yeah. Saw those diagonal shapes? What I wanna do this coming year is do a big circle here and do a path out this, this, that, and that, like a, you know, like a cross with a circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then do diagonal beds outside. I like of that. that. I think it's kinda of cool. I think that's interesting. I got the small rake. I figured it'd be a little more interesting this way. <laughs> And the cool thing is that when that cover crop comes, you can't even see this. It's all just gonna get blended back in. Yeah, exactly. Because it doesn't look great. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just to get the germ going. 
Because when you do a raking method like this, you run the risk of it not, um, you know, you're not burying the, the seeds exactly as you right. would maybe prefer. In the perfect sense. Yeah. Okay, Jacques, I've got the ultimate harvesting tool. <laughs> Honestly, it's kind of fun. Maybe too much fun. Oh, dude, look at this. Oh, whoa. Have you ever seen? That is so many, I think, swallowtail larvae. I think so. I think so. And you know what? It would make sense at swallowtail because it's on parsley, which is in the family Same of family. dill, which is yeah, the actually, type of plant. Check that out that dill. There's a couple on there too. Absolutely gone. Okay, so end of summer, trying to come through and harvest. Not everything because, you know, about to go on a little trip here. So I don't want to just leave my produce, but I have to say it's probably time for the leeks to go. Yeah? Yeah. Probably time. I'm honestly shocked that they made it this long. I'm it's also going to do, hey, I'm going to do a little zinnia chop. Why not? That's a decent amount of white at the bottom there. That's not bad. You know what I'll do is I'll chop them, prep them, freeze them. Perfect. Just get I them actually have a go. couple in my freezer too. Yeah. So it's taken a while, Jacques, and it seems like same with your garden, but the eggplant are, are actually done now. Yeah. But here's my question for you. I need to harvest them because eggplant overripe is just like one of the worst things ever. Don't even eat it. But how would you store it? I find like at this stage, they should last in the fridge minimum a week. Minimum a week? Yeah. Okay. Well, so then I can... other than that, I can't honestly think of any good way of storing eggplant. It's nice, right? I guess that's why they call it the eggplant. Yeah. <laughs> the actual white one. Nice white eggplant. So check this out. That's a very high quality leak. That's the biggest leak I've ever personally seen. Wait, really? Yeah. Huh. Like, look at, look at the heft in here. Yeah. Like well, I've grown five well, foot leaks. Yeah. But not like this. What I'm proud of on that is the amount of sort of blanched stem. Yeah. There is, or blanched, it's not a stem, it's a cluster of leaves, but either way, um, it's really nice. Really nice year for leeks, King That's Richard leeks. The nice part, Jacques, on the corn, this like late harvest, this late sowing is that it won't get hit by the corn earworm. Yeah. But it also might not become a full ear because of the season, right? I think so, here you'll probably get away with it. We'll I see. wish I put a second batch of corn in and I totally forgot to. Yeah, we'll see. You know, I will say I'm not, I'm not disappointed, but I'm also not like extremely pleased with the yield of the determinate bed. Yeah. It's just so slow. It's so slow. So that's um, what happened. I got like that early flush of tomatoes. And then actually, this, over here's decent. Take a look. You got a little load there? This is decent, yeah. Maybe I'll make a sauce tonight and just preserve it up. Not bad. But that, that ground tomato is probably your best. Yeah. <laughs> the disrespect. I know, I know. So floppy Marzano, I've come back and back to this like a, a lover who can't say no. I mean, this thing is just, you pick it up and you find some gems no matter what time you look. It's not bad. No, dude, but dude, like, look at this, like. Oh yeah, there's even more. Look at this, you just pick this up, right? Look what's down there. That's so there's wild. There's so much. It is, I will say, it is coming to the end. It's a nice looking tomato there. But it not it? Like, I would say off of this one, which I don't, this doesn't look like a Morzano to me, it looks like more of a standard uh, plum. Yeah. Um, I would say I've, I've already gotten about 100, let alone what's about to come. I was gonna know? say maybe you saved some seed, but it's probably already gonna reset itself. Oh, anyway. there's definitely some in the ground already. <laughs> You want to see the scariest thing you've ever seen before? No, dude. I already saw that today with the leaf-footed bugs. What is it? You have to come see. I don't want to, though, is the thing. 300 roly-polies? Oh, my God. Oh, my <laughs> What, Dude. When people say that roly-polies can't eat plants, I'm like, you, you've got to be kidding me. That's called the Devil's Gulch right there. Like, what is going on there, man? Look at that. This guy got decimated. Absolutely crushed. But that's a keeper. A nice little oh that's a very the good the striped one yeah yeah that's nice i think it's finally time to get these absolutely enormous onions out of the ground jacques with the artillery <laughs> that's comical how big that is like that's just it just doesn't make sense like it just actually doesn't make sense the cool thing too it, look how tiny this root ball is isn't that wild compared that to the could, onion that it could create such a and it's just a short raised bed so these were Yellow sweet Spanish onions sown on the 27th of last September. Okay. So this was an 11 month grow. So now we know. We need to start our onions in September. Yeah. So we have a metric ton of alliums yet again. So I've been really trying this year, guys, to find ways to get better at preserving and transforming because the garden, no matter how well you plant it, right, you're always gonna get a glut of random stuff. Like 
we, we thought we planted a good amount of onions. We, we knew we probably overplanted a little, but even, <laughs> even then we got well more than we thought, yeah. right? And I don't know if you had something like that in your so garden So for me, I've, I've never really been good at preserving. Generally we eat a lot of what we have in yeah. the moment, yeah. but the only preserving I really do is freezing. It's really easy. We got a chest freezer last year. And especially for tomatoes, like sauce tomatoes, I just throw them straight up in a like gallon bag right into the freezer. Then I just use them later in the winter, but that's it. I want to get into more. I want to try more dried stuff. Yeah. And I would love to try canning, which I think you're getting into or about Spoiler to be. Alert. Yes, I, I bought a pressure canner. I talked to our new friend, Becky at Acre Homestead. Oh yeah. Who has a fantastic YouTube channel. She came on our podcast called The Beat, which you should check out in the description. But um, talked to Becky and she's a big canner, like massive amount of canning. In fact, after we were gonna talk, she was heading off to do, I think a hundred pounds of tomatoes. <laughs> Um, so I don't know if she was going sauces. She said she's been making ketchups, sauces, pizza oh. sauces. Like, so she's, she's at the level where she's taking like a tomato and turning it into three to four different preserved goods. That's amazing. You know, I love the idea of like saying I'm putting up jars this weekend, putting up jars, just putting up jars, putting up tomatoes. Yeah. You know, it just sounds so good. She did say though, however, guys, that ketchup is not worth the Oh effort. really? No. She said the store bought is actually just much tastier because you can't really get that flavor profile from the canning, in her opinion. Um, mm. So, you, just something. It's actually interesting, a little aside, is that ketchup, as far as I understand, once they created that recipe, it's been the same ever since. Really? It just holds well, Yeah. and it's delicious. Anyways, we have quite the harvest here. You'll see what we end up doing with some of this. We're gonna can it, we're gonna dehydrate it, we might go back to the freeze dryer, <laughs> uh, we might go back to some pickles, but let us know. If there's something you wanna see us explore more, I'm personally getting a lot more excited about what to do with the food that I grow besides just chopping it up and, and cooking it. it. Yeah. <laughs> so let us know down below. Thanks again to Armra for sponsoring the video. That has dramatically improved my feeling in my body, in my gut. I don't know how else to put it. So I'm a big fan of it. That's why we decided to have them sponsor this video. And until next time, good luck in the garden and keep on growing.